You may be wondering what we're doing in a rather unusual location on a green airstrip. We have a Peugeot 3008, their new vehicle, and a glider. What we've been doing is uh, proving a very clever feature of this car. It can actually tow this glider. But it's a bit technical to explain, so I'm going to get Andy Sutton from Peugeot, who not only is Peugeot's PR director, but he's also the pilot, to explain exactly what the Peugeot 3008 does. Andy? Well, this car is fitted with Peugeot's new grip control system. It gives what's a two-wheel drive car effectively virtually the pulling capacity of a four-wheel drive car. So we've been able to launch a glider today with a vehicle that ordinarily just wouldn't have the pull over rough ground to be able to do this. And yet, of course, it doesn't have the complexity or expense of four-wheel drive. Excellent. I suppose really what we're talking about here, though, is we're not likely to see too many Peugeot 3008 owners towing their uh, glider along there. It's nice for them to know, but... It's not the plan, Ken, no. <laughs> we can see a lot of it, though, it being used in things like towing caravans, uh, boat, on trailers. Rough, boat trailers. So, the 3008, apart from capable of pulling a glider, what actually is it? Well, it's Peugeot's new crossover vehicle. That's because it's part family hatchback, part SUV, and part people carrier. And it actually does combine them all rather well. It's got a very good selection of engines, starting with two very good 1.6 turbo diesel and a 1.6 turbo petrol. What I really like about it is, though, the interior. Peugeot really have raised their game here. This has a premium feel to it. Feels more like a German executive car than a French car. Having played around with gliders all day, it's got quite a cockpit feel to it as well. I like the way it wraps around the driver here. And in fact, we've got a lot of old fashioned type of toggle switches here as well. And it's also got something very top gun in front with a head up display right in front of the driver's eyes where you can actually get the ORE miles per hour. Very useful, means you don't look down, you're not distracted. And uh, I keep looking and thinking I'm going to get something in my sights and I'm going to fire, but hasn't happened so far. The more time I've spent in the car, the more I've enjoyed the driving experience. It's got a very smooth six-speed gearbox. Steering is very precise, very responsive. Handling in the corner is excellent for a fairly reasonably sized vehicle. And the 3008 is a pretty practical vehicle for family users. It's got a very deep and useful size boot, 512 litres of space, and that's before you actually fold the back uh, two seats down as well, which opens it up to the size of a very good estate car. Visually, it, it, it's not a stunning looking car, there's, there's no doubt about that. I think it's different though, I like it, it's a bit unusual. It's very sort of 4x4 macho-ish head-on from the front. It's got chunky wheel arches. Um, and then it looks a little bit sort of coupe-ish from the side profile. It's a type of car that will get you noticed. Life, as they say, is a compromise. And in many ways the 3008 is a compromise. It's not quite an SUV, it's not quite a people carrier, and it's not quite a family hatch but I actually think that it ticks just about all of the boxes that a large growing family could be looking at. I think it's got a lot about it, and I think that they might just have a useful niche selling car on their hands here.